What's going on, Linear Auction Bros? It's Mr. C, and this is the third and final installment of videos for um, the Section 4.5 note handout. Uh, so in this video, we're going to find a basis for the solution space of the homogeneous linear system, and then find the dimension of that space. Uh, so hopefully it's clear that we have a homogeneous linear system here. All the constant values are zero. Uh, to get started with this problem, what I'd like to do is write this in an augmented matrix setting. So in the first row, we'll have 1, negative 3, 1, 0. That will be after the augment bar that 0 is. Second row, we'll have 2, negative 6, 2, 0. And the third row will be 3, negative 9, 3, 0. What I'd like to do from here is RREF this matrix. And we get an interesting uh, reduced row echelon form of this matrix. In the first row is actually all the same entries, 1, negative 3, 1, 0, that is. Um, the second and third row are actually going to all be zeros. So what does this mean for us? Well, what it means is that, you know, if we wanted to write out the uh, solution to this, we're going to need some parametric equations. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get rolling with that. Um, by the way, the free variables uh, would be uh, y and z. And that's because there's no row in here, which says that you know y and z um, is a leading variable, so they have to be free variables. All right, um, it might help to remind ourselves that uh, this column two uh, is associated with variable y, and this column three is associated with the variable z. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to define two parameters. I'm going to say let y equal s. Let's try that again. Let y equal s. And I'll let z equal t. So what we'll do is hone in on row 1 and write row 1 in equation format. Row 1 says that x minus 3y plus z is equal to 0. But of course, we're going to replace y and z with their parameters. So x minus 3s plus t is equal to 0. And now what I'll do is just go ahead and solve for x. Uh, by moving uh, the second and third term over to the right-hand side. So x is going to equal positive 3s minus t. All right, so that gives us our set of parametric equations. I'll write out x first. x is equal to 3s minus t. y is equal to s, and z is equal to t. So how do we find a basis for the solutions? Or in other words, what does the solution space look like? And what can we determine about the dimension of that space? Well, the trick is to write uh, the parametric equations uh, as like an ordered triple. Um, here's what I mean. Uh, let this uh, generic order triple x comma y comma z represent any solution uh, to the homogeneous uh, linear system here. Um, we have actually some specific expressions for each of these three variables. Uh, namely, uh, x is 3s minus t. y is s. And then z is t. And I'm going to do some fancy uh, vector work next. I'm actually going to break the uh, vector expression on the right of uh, the equation here as a sum of two vectors. Uh, one vector is just going to involve the parameter s, and the second vector is just going to involve the parameter t. Um, you might want to verify this on your own, but uh, the vector that involves the parameter s is going to have these components, 
3s as the first component, s as the second, and 0 as the third. The vector involving the parameter uh, t is going to have these as components, negative t, comma 0, comma t. The way to check this is to just mentally add these two together and see if you come up with the uh, components um, in the line above. Um, so it does check out. And uh, there's going to be some more that we do to this. Um, the, the first is that I'm going to factor out the parameter s from all three of these uh, components. So I'm going to put s in front of a specific ordered triple that will be 3, 1, 0. And I'm going to factor t out from the second vector, which will give us some specific components as well, negative 1, 0, and 1, in fact. So in terms of you know our goal here, um, the solution space that we get is built up of the set of all linear combinations of these two vectors, namely 3, 1, 0 and negative 1, 0, 1. Hmm, if we take two vectors and we start to form the set of all linear combinations of them, what kind of object do you think we'd get? we would actually get a plane. Um, it can actually be shown that the solution space here is a plane to the origin uh, that contains uh, these two vectors. Um, so in other words, a basis for um, the solution space, let me write this out, basis, which I'm going to call um, B, if you will, okay? Um, the basis B for the solution set will consist of all the linear combinations of the two vectors 3, 1, 0 and negative 1, 0, 1. So notationally, here's how we'll write it. We'll write it in set notation, and in the set, we're just going to write those two vectors. So 3, 1, 0 and negative 1, 0, 1. So that would be a basis for the solution space here. It also asks for the dimension. namely the dimension of the solution space, or in other words, dim b. Well, this is going to be quick. How many basis vectors does the um, basis b uh, have? It has two basis vectors, therefore the dimension of b is 2. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. There's our basis, and there's the dimension of it. Of course, if you have any questions about this video or any of the others before this, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, I really appreciate it again, guys, uh, for helping out this way, uh, getting the notes via video style. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, I'll look forward to seeing you in class. Thanks again.